My name is Pat Nurse. I'm the managing editor of Australian Gourmet Travel Magazine. I know a little bit about ham and cheese, but these guys know the real deal. In the blue corner, weighing in at... We have... <laughs> Giorgio Linguanti from That's Amore Cheese. The master operata. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, please. Come on. Coming in, in the other red corner, weighing in at... <clears throat> we have, on behalf of the Consorzio del Prosciutto di Parma, the magic that is Luca Gian. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Too kind. So, ladies and gentlemen, we love ham, we love cheese, we love burrata, we love prosciutto. What about loving them together? What about exploring new ways to enjoy these superb Italian artisanal products? And I think t today here on the SMEG stage of the Melbourne Italian Wine and Food Festival, it's particularly apt that we have the marriage, the union of one of Italy's most storied historic food products in the form of prosciutto from Parma, the jewel of Emilia Romagna, and then we also have an Australian made burrata, a burrata that has its seeds, ladies and gentlemen, not just in Melbourne, not just north of the bridge, but in Carlton. How's that? I think that deserves a round of applause. And now, do you have anyone from Thomastown? Because, you know, that's more is not just a latteria that has its roots in Carlton on Elgin Street, but it's now spread through the magic and love that Melbourne has shown for stretched curd cheeses to a fantastic new facility that's pumping out the dairy goods over in Thomastown. Tell me all about it, Georgia. Uh, finally, we, in the last two years, we've been established our um, new production facilities in Thomastown. We also have a beautiful retail outlet, and also the lunch, the traditional Italian food, Vienna style, very, very good, very good quality money. And, uh, Buying the factory is uh, still fascinating for the, for the normal people. They can buy much more, especially Italians a lot of the uh, love in shopping in the factory. Uh, Am, I right? stuff. Am I right? Now, Luca, you are here with a serious burden. You are here to be the representative of Prosciutto del Palma, del Palma here in Australia. But you're a man who wears many hats, not all of them. I made try to. Hand. Of course, many of you know Luca, but for those few of us who are yet to make your intimate acquaintance, why are you here? Tell us your story. I don't know. They just told me to show up and I did, man. That's, uh, that's about it. I was uh, happy in Sydney last night working at another event, but they say, hey, we need you here. Now, joke apart, we got of the, I'm here to represent the, am I the loudest amongst no. those all? Yeah. Just, he's not the loudest, Excellent. he's just the best looking. I don't know. I've, um, I've got the privilege, the privilege to work with a lot of beautiful um, brands, Italian brands mainly across Australia. I have the privilege to have launched my own product range, you can see here in my cookbook. So I get to you know, travel a lot and plug myself and other people. But when it comes to the he consortium... He travels a lot to plug himself and other people, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I try to do. But when it comes to the consortium of Prosciutto Parma, it's like wearing the Italian jersey, right? You, you're talking about such a specific, unique uh, product out of Italy that I'm extremely proud of. So today I've got something to complement uh, uh, George's, uh, George's ingredients. We're going to start with one ricotta to make uh, a savory cannolo, parmesan cannolo with Prosciutto di Parma. And then a we're going to... savory cannolo. savory cannolo. Look, I've already so, made it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're familiar with cannoli, the traditional Sicilian pastry that is a, a filled, crisp pastry shell that has ricotta, am I right there? Traditionally, so yes. Traditional ricotta with maybe ricotta. some candy peel, but instead today, ladies and gentlemen, we are Frankenstein-like, crossing the streams, Ghostbusters style, to make the cannolo shell out of cheese itself. It's oh a way, goodness, ladies and gentlemen, a we way, are making history here tonight. A way to see, but what we're gonna do, if you think of the classic cannolo from Sicily, we'll have the ricotta, and most of the time, out of Sicily, we'll have the beautiful pistachio, from Bronte, which is obviously the most famous place where the most beautiful pistachio come from, always dipped on the side or chocolate. So I'm gonna, I've already done some crunchy prosciutto to go on the edges, and then we're gonna mix through the actual uh, ricotta, some of the fresh prosciutto di Parma. Then I'm gonna come up with another couple of funky ideas, complementing all the goodness, the bocconcini that this man is gonna prepare for me. So 
if that doesn't sound high wire enough, ladies and gentlemen, if that's not <laughs> enough risk for you at the Smeg Kitchen here tonight, Giorgio is actually going to make the cheese before your very eyes. I think that deserves a bit more of a do. Yeah, come on. Is anybody hungry? Who wants to try it? Is anybody hungry? Is anybody drunk? How much have you got in your pocket? It better be a lot. Okay, what's going on over here, Giorgio? Well, practically, what we have here is a curd, and I bought it from the factory. What you see here is a curd equivalent about 20 liters of milk. And this is the milk was added from the starter culture and the rennet. And then from the milk becoming like a gel, we're cutting this beautiful milk, pot of milk, and we have two different products. We have the curd, as it is, and the whey. The way normally we put on the side for making the ricotta, totally making it a bit of way. Uh, the curd at this stage, everywhere in the world when you're making mozzarella, you use a curd, you broken little pieces. Sometimes it's a machine that cut it with this curd in little, the little pieces. You had created to this one. Then we have, we have a cold water. And in this pot here we have a boiling water, you can see the steam. So what are we going to do to the curd that we're going to add a little, the curd looks like this. Okay? We add a little pinch of salt. Allow me to recommend hosting these things for a really good perspective for your Instagram shots. <laughs> <laughs> and then we add it to this curd and salt, we're going to add the boiling water. And ladies and gentlemen, when you make ricotta at home, as fun as it is to put lots of boiling water on the floor of the kitchen, but maybe don't do that. We're just doing that because we're trained professionals here. If, it, if you're gonna wet my canola, it's gonna go out of the window, it's your fault, all right? That's it. Come on, I'm just here. I'm, make another canola I'm, I'm just here. No, no, that's it. I'm not gonna do another one. This is it, mate. That's <laughs> okay. all done. That's what we're gonna do with it. Do okay. So start to put everything together, right? What are you working with the paddles there, Georgia? With the pedal, just because the, the water is very hot, I can't put my hands inside and put everything together. If you, you should definitely shake Giorgio's hand later. Like, you know Can how I they talk about you? SK2, the famous student product. They, they discovered that from noticing that sake workers' hands are, you know, very soft from the sake leaves. Giorgio's hands are twice as soft as Kate Blanchett's face. After the years of touching cheese and cream, it's, it's like it's like being cuddled by twin Kate Blanchett's. It's you could he's only charging two or three dollars per handshake. You should definitely get one of those later. That's a more, ladies and gentlemen. That is a more. I just asked him, can I have a bit of a play around? And it's subtly fair. in Italian he just told me to get the hell out of his face. Very subtle, he was very subtle with it. Normally, no, that is a Sicilian star, isn't it? I can make a lot of No, that's okay. Okay. Practically. Once we start to put in boiling water and uh, the curd is up to get all together and you can see we can start to stretch the curd. Look at that. The idea is to have all a nice shiny curd. That is a nice shiny curd, am I right? You know, two guys will, will make you miss something. Look Please. at, how do you say the phrase a nice shiny curd in Italiano? I have no idea. Lucida. A nice shine. A curd very lucida, molto lucida. lucida. Molto lucida. Bella molto lucida. lucida. That's the most lucida curd I've seen in hours. I love it. Now, what's happening here so, in this pan? I'm on just this smeg induction stove here, Luca. I'm just that's going ahead smeg. a little bit because when this gentleman is ready with mozzarella, I want to have my stuff ready. So to finish my canolo, I've got prosciutto, fresh prosciutto di parma chopped up with the, this gentleman's ricotta, and being very smart, I need to plug my product. I'm using my white balsamic and figs and extra virgin olive oil product. Are you using your white balsamic and extra virgin olive oil product here in the Smeg kitchen? I have to. Fantastic. Otherwise, me, myself and I would be very, very disappointed. But as you know, Pat, because I'm sure you do, prosciutto, people always ask me, how do you eat prosciutto? I always talk about it and say with your mouth. So you can do a demonstration of we've, that we've, one for we've everybody. We've tried it other ways and we found the mouth is definitely... It goes well, does it? Yeah. But, you know, wrapped around figs uh, with melon uh, on a grissini stick, that's my favorite way. I like to cook a little bit with it. We're going to finish the, um, like I said before, the crispy prosciutto. All the ends that are in the kitchen, we can't slice the customers. And it's left behind. I like to cook with it. So I'm going to... You don't need this piece, do you? You go for it, sir. It's all yours. It's got your name on it. 
So this is gonna be the filling for my cannolo, so simple. Fresh ricotta, loosen it up, prosciutto, fresh prosciutto in it, and I'm gonna pipe my cannolo, and my very first little simple creation is gonna be done. Now, if you do this at home, grate some um, um, parmigiano reggiano or grana padano, put it onto grease proof paper, in the oven for about 10 minutes at about 180. Don't make the mistake that I've been, I've done it too thin, and believe me, it's gonna break in front of you as soon as I'm gonna pipe it. So I'm gonna look like an idiot, all right? But and back home, make it a little bit thicker than what it just did. And like, what, right. a, what a showstopper for your next dinner party. Grate some cheese onto some grease fruit paper, whack yep. it in the oven, it goes crisp, or you know, it goes soft, while it's still soft, roll it up. As soon as it comes out, as roll it. it comes out, roll it. I've gone as far to almost get thrown out of the plane. They didn't want to try, let me travel with this because I only had a hand luggage, but I got the original canola case. You could use an original canola mold or you can just make your children roll it while it's still hot. That's what they're for. Then grab some fresh cheese, some sprinkles of whatever kind you have lying uh, around this the house. For the I'm going to bother you with it for the next one. And then away you go. Very small canola, Luca. Huh? That's a very small canola, Luca. Very small? <laughs> Listen, right, I'm from Milano. Milano. This is the <laughs> cannoli you get in Milano, all right? All right. Just yeah, bring me some fun. Tick the inevitable cannolo size comparison joke, ladies and gentlemen. It's a okay. classic of the genre. I think we also need already to make it. You can see nice and shiny, so we can start to make some mozzarella, some bocconcini. So we're shaping a little bowl. You're, you're shaping some and little balls there, Giorgio. And we're and putting the right, yeah. yeah. Shaping the little balls to go with the small. Everyone, everyone have different parameters. Okay. Yes, of course. Whoops, here's the vicar. So it depends on what shape we give you to, I can change the name of the product. If you normally do it big, I can be fiori di latte. If the mozzarella is a matter of buffalo milk, it's a buffalo mozzarella. And uh, if you make a little bocconcini, little balls, then little bocconcini. And uh, depends also the, where they come from, they can change the name. In Italy, they used to make also big mozzarella. There's a place in here. Uh, as I said, that in your neighbor's called Battipaglia, they make big mozzarella, about 5 kilo each. What's, and, the, what's the biggest burrata you've made? Myself? Yeah. One kilo. Just One kilo. A party. I feel a, you know, I feel a gigantic uh, burrata coming on at next year's Melbourne Italian Wine Food Festival. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Like a massive, like, play pool full of hot, hot cream? I think you can do better than a kilo, Giorgio. I Come think on. you can do better. Uh, we made a big mozzarella, buffalo mozzarella, 2.6 kilo, the other guy. Now we're talking. <laughs> and uh, we try to represent this product from Italy called La Zazzona di Battivaglia. La Zazzona means the big book. And because of this mozzarella, typically, have also a big people. I think gigantic cheeses are what we're all about. Now, gentlemen, I don't want to rush you, but we have 10 minutes before the pizza yeah, acrobatics like take I over this stage. I haven't heard that one before. And those guys are extremely dangerous with that dough. So I tell you what, I'm going to finish my canola so everybody can see what I'm doing. The reason why I'm using this prosciutto instead of getting it from my stand with the prosciutto di Parma, I want to show everybody prosciutto di Parma, ladies and gentlemen, from the region of Emilia Romagna. That's also where Smeg is from, from Guastala. It's only half an hour away from it. And the, the actual pigs, there's only three different breeds of pigs selected for the making of prosciutto di Parma. The pigs which are about 160 kilos in weight, nine months of age, and the process starts up to one year minimum to classify this prosciutto di parma. There will be a specialist coming with a, a horse uh, bone needle, pricking through the prosciutto in key areas, smelling the bone. The horse uh, bone is very porous, we retain a lot of the organic uh, smells and properties. They will be able to tell if it can age and go forward or not. Then the story becomes more exciting and interesting, but I can't share it all in 10 minutes. Actually, but but it's, um, it's fantastic. What I want to show you, prosciutto di parma must have the Ducal Crown stamp on it. So if you do like it, it's famous for its creaminess and butteriness and sweetness. You know, that's prosciutto di Parma. Most of the others are fantastic too, but if you like prosciutto di Parma, when you go look for it, make sure you get the one with the crown on top. Very important. So I'm gonna put a slice of prosciutto at the bottom so my cannolo doesn't get to um, move around the plate. Is this being seen somewhere? There's a screen? No? There's a screen just a screen there. there. Every movement is so being filmed I'll try to, in a close-up. I'll put it here. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone hold their breath really, really tight, but not too tight. We don't want to freak him out. And if I don't break it, round of applause. That is looking much. incredible. Wow. Now, a bit of the crispy prosciutto on the side. This is so going to break now after everybody clap. 
Oh, and these are, if you do these in a smaller way, at dinner parties, wow, oh, oh, that. it's really fun. And of course, because I got my own dressing here, I got drizzle on the figs, extra virgin olive oil, and white balsamic. And there you go, that's my little prosciutto Ooh. canalo little thingy. Thank you very much. Now, Giorgio, off to you. Get me some mozzarella and I'll whip something else up. Okay, uh, can I have a slice of prosciutto, please? Do you do like balloon animals with, with uh -huh. fresh cheeses? Sorry, like, have you ever thought good. about making Sorry, it? sorry, Pat. Do you ever do balloon animals with, uh, with fresh cheeses or stretch curd cheeses? Like a, a small poodle or, you know, like writing my name, for instance? Sorry, sorry. You know, like the, the guys who make balloon animals with long, skinny balloons, how they can make like dogs or clowns or things like that? Ah, oui. You know what? When I was a little in Sicily, I remember on the Feste Paisane, on the little Feste from the little town, a um, shepherd from the mountains was where I bring you this pasta filata, little cheese shaped like a dove or shaped like a horse. See, you laughed. You thought I was joking. I was actually referencing a rich Sicilian tradition of balloon animals made out of cheese. I think that that is a really awesome thing and we should actually do that at next year's Melbourne Italian Wine Food Festival, Thank along you. with a very big cheese. Bye -bye. Okay, we'll do some oh God, there's, there's mussels happening up here now, there's crumbs, this is... Now guys, what I'm going to do here, very simple, this, I obviously, I'm a good friend with uh, um, Giorgio, we spoke about this over the phone, I think we were in Nusa for the Nusa festival, and then yesterday he was in Sydney with me, so just to show less good festival. the versatility of his product and the versatility of my product, what I wanted to do is to not open up literally a couple of mussels, now, what I've done over here while we're all talking, I've done a, a very simple toasted chili breadcrumb. Extra virgin olive oil, um, coarsely grated breadcrumb, a bit of parsley, garlic, chili, and lemon zest towards the end. I'm gonna use this up, instead of using bread for your muscle and sauce, we're gonna sprinkle that on top of the muscle. Nice. And some prosciutto di parma is gonna go on top with the mozzarella. Boom. So that should be, uh, careful my friend, you're gonna... So for that one, what I'm going to use, out of all my range, I've got fresh rocket chili and celery, which works extremely well with seafood, pasta or anything else. But what I do at home a lot, I love mussel. I get them open. Once they pop open, I put as little or as much, and a piece of bread, I'm happy days. Tick. Mussels are still by far and away the cheapest seafood in Australia. I think, what a, what's a mussel cost? $13, $13 a kilo, something yeah, like that? Yeah, will be cheaper. Cheaper than, cheaper than meat. You know, the, these you know, ones in a packet, they're pre, you know, de bearded they're ready to rock. Fantastic Monday Cheap, night healthy. meal. All right, I'm gonna warm my sauce. How far are we with the mozzarella, sir? Are we ready? Are we ready? The time you talk and the time you did the summoning, I then make it. Look at that. Did you see there? that even happen? Oh, that man was that. making those cheese, and, uh, cheeses the whole time we were talking there. That's incredible. Sam, it's cool. I wish I wasn't on a diet. So you gotta do that on the front of me. with prosciutto. So we probably been ready. Muscle, one minute. Are we ready for the muscles? Mike, for your demonstration, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, for your fine food does not have to take a lot of work. It's, this is quicker than ordering a pizza. This is quicker than waiting for delivery. Look, open. Just pop this stuff in the pan. Open some of uh, Lucas' products or not? You know, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucas product. Lucas Definitely product. open some of Lucas' products. Make sure you Lucas' product. Get your uh, that's more cheese happening. And this is how simple I'm going to do this. So I've got a beautiful burrata over here, sir. You can open that for me. Oh, uh-oh. I hear the imminent sound of pizza approaching as we are plating. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, in advance, thank Giorgio Linguanti from That's Amore Cheese, Lucaciano of Lucaciano Products and Services. Thank you very much. And the Consorzio del Prosciutto di Parma. Thank My name's Pat Nurse, by Gourmet Traveller, it's an awesome magazine. Um, and thank you to Smeg for providing us with this magical kitchen. In five seconds we're going to have this dish finished. Yep. Gentlemen, five. And may I plug myself, my Can products... Can he plug himself? My products, my cookbook, and if you want to try some delicious prosciutto, just come and see us over there. We've got everything for you to try. And you'll find that's great, just over there.
burrata on the side, toasted chili breadcrumb on top of the mussels. The burrata, guys, you know, you can leave it just at room temperature, put it on top of a warm sauce, and even in winter, it's just a beautiful, beautiful way to have it. And I'm gonna use some of these uh, ready-to-go crunchy prosciutto di parma to go on top of my mussels. And it's just a very quick and simple, delicious way to have your meat quick, with dinner. Quick, simple, and delicious. That's Lucaciano, that's Amore, and that's been the love child of Baracta and Prosciutto. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. That's